American philosopher and poet Stanley Horowitz described the seasons by writing, winter is an etching, spring a watercolor, summer an oil painting, and autumn a mosaic of them all. Welcome to Dakota Life. I'm Michelle Van Manen. Nowhere in the world is that description of the seasons more appropriate than here in South Dakota. No matter where you live, you can look out your window during October and see nature's rich mosaic of colors and textures. As our crews travel the state, we continually discover more and more vivid pieces of another mosaic, one made up of the colorful personalities of South Dakota's people. That's what this edition of our program is about. Farming isn't necessarily funny. The weather, low prices, and ever-changing technologies are serious subjects for most ag producers, but a Volga man has managed to find humor in everyday farm life, and by sharing it with others, he's making a lot of people smile. Being of Norwegian descent, I'm among those who believe that coffee should be classified as an essential bodily fluid. Yes, I'll admit it. I'm a Java junkie. I will never forget the Christmas which followed the summer of greased cats. That was the summer when my brother, Coolidge, and I discovered a marvelous property of our grease gun. It actually shot grease. Jerry Nelson is a dairy farmer from Volga. He's worked the same ground his father, grandfather, and great-grandfather farmed for the last 120 years. Farming is all he's ever wanted to do. When Nelson graduated from high school, farming was in a boom cycle, but not for him. Jerry calls himself a scratch farmer. He started from scratch, and he's still scratching years later. He, his wife, and two sons have lived through low cattle prices, plummeting land values, and a bankruptcy. But he's managed to hang on to the family farm. Now he uses it as inspiration for a budding career as an ag humorist. I've often heard farmers say, well, you don't know whether to laugh or cry. And I thought, well, if you have a choice, why not laugh if you can? And so this whole thing started in, I think it was 1996, when we had a really wet year. And I drove around and looked at my cornfields, and uh, they looked more like lakes than cornfields. And I could see some cattails beginning to sprout at the edge of the field. And I went home. I didn't know what else to do. So I fired up the computer and figured out how to use the word processor. And I wrote a spoof letter to Mel Kloster, my county agent. And I, instead of writing, Dear Mel, I wrote, Dear County Agent Guy, you know, like people say. And uh, I asked him if he had any herbicide for cattails in my corn. And while he was at it, maybe he could figure out some way to get rid of those darn ducks that are out there. No doubt they're shredding some corn leaves. And while he was at it, maybe he could help me get rid of those people with their jet skis and power boats. Keep in mind, this is written on a brown feed bag. You know, the, the brown paper liner on a feed bag, you know. And, um, you know, it says, uh, one last question. You know, it, will the hail penetrate the water deep enough to do more damage to the corn, or will the duck's feet do more damage because they've got those little claws on the end as they swim over the tops of the corn? And, you know, if, if you can make light of a bad situation and when you're suffering it, I mean, he was, that was his situation. You know, he's got cattails growing up in the cornfield. The ducks are swimming over the top of his corn. And he sat down and wrote this letter. And I'd, I couldn't help but laugh. And, um, you know, I said, you know, when I talked to Jerry the next time, I said, Jerry, I said, you know, you probably should consider sharing this with a few other folks. Because I said, you know, I, you know, I, I laughed for days. He encouraged me to have it published. And I said, do you think people would want to read that? And he says, yeah, sure they would. So I took it to Chris Schumacher at the Volga Tribune. And he read it and said, well, yeah, I'll publish this. Do you have any more? And I said, well, I don't know. I've got an idea or two. And here it is five years later, and I'm still doing it. Since then, he's self-syndicated. And his column appears in numerous newspapers in the Midwest and Canada, as well as in national magazines, such as Successful Farming. Claire Gustafson is a native South Dakotan and a retired English professor from Berkeley, California. He now lives on his family's farm near Arlington and was introduced to Nelson's column by a friend. I was really struck in particular by a column that the Four Seasons of Farming, because I thought it was extremely poetic and in the best sense, like a, underneath this commentary, there was this kind of like a bell 
that was going on and, all, and the sounds of the words and the lines were very natural and the, the substance was just a natural discussion of what he thought about the seasons on the farm. Were you surprised to find that he was, was in fact a farmer who he didn't have any training in writing and hadn't been to college and that sort of thing? Well, no, I really wasn't surprised by that. I, I, Jerry certainly could easily have gone to college and done very well. I mean, it's perfectly clear when you listen to him a little while and that uh, he could be a great doctor or whatever. But he has this, also this, uh, this ear and this wit and uh, he, he learns quick. I mean, uh, when he thinks about something, he tries it out and it doesn't work or is not working as well as something else, you see his style change very quickly. And so I just got interested in this guy is uh, flexible and he's, he's got a deep resource. A lot of the writing is done while I'm like uh, cleaning the barn or driving the tractor. Uh, to say that I do my writing at the computer is like saying that the space shuttle is built at Cape Canaveral. No, it's just launched at Cape Canaveral. It's built elsewhere in many different places by many contractors. And that's how my writing goes. I'll hear a blurb on the radio and, and some idea will come or, or I'll read something and muddle on it. And the building actually takes place while I'm doing other stuff, you know, many times. Despite the popularity of his humor, Nelson has also received favorable responses from readers when the columns have taken a more serious turn. Still standing on the family farm is the house built by his great-grandfather, Nelson had considered burning it down, but something stopped him and he preserved its history. Years later, after his father passed away, Nelson returned to the old house to reminisce about the past. Here, as I stood once again on that ancient linoleum in the old house, my eye was drawn to the jumble of papers. A singular envelope, yellowed with age, lay right on top. A blue stamp on the envelope read, cleared by military censors. I carefully removed the letter marked September of 1944. My father had served aboard the USS Washington during World War II in the South Pacific. I read his familiar scrawl. He wondered how the oat harvest was and how my uncle's new team of horses was working out. He supposed that his youngest brother was starting first grade and had become quite a little man. He asked his mother to greet everyone and said that he missed them all. It wasn't hard to read between the lines. Here was a homesick young man, an 18-year-old kid, who had grown up on a sea of prairie grass. Now he was on an ocean churned by the thunder and lightning of a world at war. Before, he had been focused on nurturing and caring for life. Now he had become a cog in the wheel of a world-class killing machine. My gaze was inexorably drawn to the underlined print at the bottom of the page. Tears burned my eyes as I read those words he had so carefully emphasized. All is well here. Please don't worry about me. I'm doing fine. How could I have missed this precious artifact? My father had passed on one last message, sent long before I was born, and received only after his death. And the old house had become the messenger. Most farmers talk mainly to other farmers. But Nelson seems to feel at ease sharing his innermost thoughts with the public. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why I do it. It's kind of like, why do you farm? Well, it's because I like it. I get some pleasure from it. And I guess writing is the same way. I, I get some pleasure from it. I like seeing a well-turned phrase or a, a good sentence, that kind of a thing. Um, I see stuff that passes for writing that's awful, <laughs> and you want to slap them. But uh, other times I see stuff that is really good and you just want to give people the same pleasure that you've gotten from reading something like that. When Nelson's first column was published, he never dreamed he'd still be writing over five years later. But so far, he says, the writing well hasn't run dry. For information on ordering a CD of Jerry's humor, just visit our website.